Tutorial 2 is on creating links. Before we can get to that, we need to talk a little bit about how the Internet actually works. What you're looking at right now is a PDF that I actually made for a different class that I wasn't intending to show in this class, but since we don't have the board to write on, I think this will probably be the most succinct way to describe uh, some of these topics that are discussed in the first few pages of Tutorial 2. So here we are at our house creating an HTML page, and we've saved it on our home computer. Here are all the little people online, it's all their smiling, happy faces, because they want to see our wonderful website. Well, they aren't actually, obviously, going to start filing through our living room to look at our notebook computer and see the HTML pages that we've saved there. We would actually upload our pages to a web server. So in this diagram, the pages are being uploaded to the college's server. And these users, if you follow the arrow, are actually sending their requests to see your website to this server, and the page is being sent back to them. We sent this page to the web server through something called FTP. This is something that we're going to be looking at well after the midterm because right now we aren't actually creating web pages that we're posting on the web for the entire world to see, uh, but we will do that with our project eventually. So we send these files through FTP, File Transfer Protocol which is just an agreed-upon way that the server has decided that it wants to receive and understand and interpret this information. And when people online request our page, our HTML page, our hypertext markup language page, they are using HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol to obtain that page. So this term protocol we actually see a lot. Uh, in fact, in tutorial 2 it talks about yet another protocol, the TCP IP. Protocol essentially just means rules for the exchange, just an agreed upon way that we have decided to communicate. I want to look at a URL. URL, as it says here, stands for Uniform Resource Locator. And what we see is our protocol, HTTP. World Wide Web, this indicates that we are dealing with a subset of the Internet, the World Wide Web. A lot of people think that World Wide Web and Internet are actually synonymous terms. But in reality, the Internet is a more of a larger term, and the World Wide Web is just a subset of that because there are Internet technologies like VoIP and email that are not you know, necessarily the, the World Wide Web. Then we see our domain name. This portion of the domain name is called a top-level domain, the .edu, .com, .gov. And then we see the path, our folder, and the file within the folder. And we probably aren't surprised that that ends in .html. There is another step to this whole process, too, though. Now let's think for a minute when we dial phone numbers, maybe on our mobile phone. We probably don't remember every phone that every phone number, excuse me, that we want to call. So we have numbers saved, our mother's number, our best friend's number, our spouse's number saved in the phone. And instead of actually dialing in the number, we pick their name, and the first thing the phone does is look up the corresponding number. Similarly, to get to these servers, there is a corresponding number. It's called an IP address. If you look up here in my address bar, I have put in an IP address. I just went ahead and typed that in, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. And we'll see that we brought up the page for CNN. 
So this 156.166.226.26 is one, there's probably many web servers hosting CNN's page, uh, but one of the IP addresses that corresponds to CNN.com. So what I've done is I've bypassed the idea of typing in that name and gone straight to the number. Just like I could bypass the idea of clicking on my best friend's name in my phone and typing the phone number in directly. In reality, when I type in something like CNN.com, what, actu what actually happens is that the request stops by a DNS server, domain name server, which translates the CNN.com into the actual website, the numerical address, the IP address, and then I'm able to locate the server where this page is hosted so I can go ahead and look at the page in my web browser. The reason that we use URLs is because obviously if I saw on the side of a bus an advertisement to read the latest news at 157.166.226.26, I'm, I'm not going to remember that. But I probably will remember something like CNN.com and actually still have that in my mind when I go home and want to look at the page. If you look through the material in tutorial 2, you'll see another explanation, ex excuse me, explanation of the URL as well as a discussion of this IP address, a numerical address composed of a series of four numbers separated by dots. Another thing that we'll see in here is the idea of a storyboard. So far we've only been working with one page. But a website is essentially a collection of web pages. And so we might have something that looks more like this, where we have our main page and then pages that that page links to. Now we are at the point where we can start to talk about links. But I'm just going to very quickly open up another hierarchy page just to show you this idea of linking to other pages or portions of pages that might be of interest to us. For today's discussion, I've gone ahead and started with a HTML file that I will upload to Blackboard when we are done. This uh, file is going to contain our work on links and we'll continue working on it next week. The textbook this time introduces something new to us. It introduces a piece of JavaScript to us to start adding to all of our files. I also put a link to this page on Blackboard. Uh, this is actually pretty, pretty low, the score here. I just used this in uh, Firefox a second ago and had a score uh, well into the the high 400s. Uh, but the the kind of the end um, takeaway that we get from this is some HTML5 tags cannot yet be interpreted by browsers. So we are going to use a piece of JavaScript and just for now I'm going to go ahead and drag this onto my desktop. I did put this file on Blackboard so you can start using it with your assignments. We're going to take this piece of JavaScript and start using it in our files. And the entire purpose of this is just to help with interpreting some of that material that is not uh, yet supported, you know, HTML specific tags that is not yet supported by browsers. Now, we might not always be using tags on every single page where this is an issue, but it's one of those things where it's a good habit to just get into adding this line to our document. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, 
and I'm going to go ahead and open my HTML page in my internet. Excuse me, I think I got cut off there for a second. I'm going to go ahead and open this page in my Internet Explorer window. And I guess we can go ahead and close this. Now, we don't have anything yet on the page because there's no content within our body tags, but this will give us a great place to get started. The first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is add an external link. I'm going to be doing this using the anchor element. Here's an example from the textbook. This is also discussed on page 71. So this particular tutorial brings us through uh, some travel pages. So let me go ahead and just grab an, an external link that we can, can use. I don't know why this is taking so long there, but let me go ahead and grab this link. And I'm going to go back to my HTML page in Notepad and put some content here. Maybe I'll uh, use Heading 1 to describe that these are external links. And I'm now going to use the anchor element. So it's A for anchor. And then href stands for a hyperlink reference. And paste in my URL, I do want to include the entire URL, which is why I decided to just cut and paste it from a browser rather than um, rather than going ahead and uh, typing it from, from memory. And then I can type the words that I want the user to click on. So maybe I'll just call this kayak. And I need my closing anchor. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to go ahead and close this one here. I'm going to refresh. I see my page and I'm going to click on the link and I will see that it does in fact take me to that external site. There is another thing that we can add to this link uh, which is a title attribute. This is not something that I would write in real life. It's not the most um, useful, but just so that we can see what's happening here. A refresh, and then when I hover, notice that that title, sorry, tag is not the, the word to appropriate terminology there, um, but when I hover, I see that text there. It's also very helpful for somebody that might use a screen reader. And remember, in this case, we're actually naming the website and the link, but we might not have done that. We might have just written something like, you can find cheap flights, and cheap flights would have served as the text for the link. So there are a lot of reasons to actually include that title tag. The next thing I'm going to do is show us how we can use this to link to other resources. So let's say that these external links are to sites and I'm going to add some links to other resources. The one that I'm going to do first is a link to a file. And I do actually have a file, which I'm going to go ahead and just grab out of here and put on my desktop so that it's in the same location for now. Uh, towards the end of this, we can go ahead and add a little file hierarchy to it. But I can just put this in. And instead of the URL here, I'm just going to use the file name. And I could use a, a title tag as well. Sorry, I, I, mean, I mean to call this a, an attribute. The title is an attribute. It's modifying the anchor element. Uh, I apologize for the terminology. And 
going to go ahead and just, oops, I forgot to close my paragraph tag around this, which reminds me I also forgot to close my paragraph tag around the earlier uh, link. This points out a really good reason why it's useful sometimes to just op write the open and closing tag before you write the content inside. So go ahead and refresh and we'll see when we click on the PDF file it does actually bring up the PDF that we obtained from our our textbook. And I could hover and see that, oops, I should see my title. I make a mistake there. I should have seen my the content of my title tag when I had hovered there. Let me refresh. Maybe I hit the wrong. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. So do you see the, the title tag content? Now I'm going to go ahead and show you an email link. Very similar to what we've been doing so far, except the change as far as what we type here. We'll type in mail to, and I'll just use my own email address. I could also use a title tag here as well. I'm just going to use the example text again. But this would be useful if the words for the user to click on just said something like this. I'm not actually going to click on this link to verify that it works because what will happen is this will actually open up my default uh, application for uh, sending emails when I open this. Uh, this is actually quite controversial using the mail to or using a direct email link. Often people become uh, frustrated with these because um, they don't want to open that application. They just want to type it in. This is where if I have the email link actually not saying my email that using the title tag would be helpful to that or you see the person could look at the bottom of their browser uh, for it as well. But a lot of people don't like to type in the actual email address and like to use words like contact me or send an email to avoid a spider or bot that's trying to harvest email for the purpose of sending spam. Uh, I am going to go ahead and skip the next section of tutorial 2 which talks about making sections to a page and creating what's essentially uh, used to be called an anchor link, jumping to areas on the page. And instead, I'm going to go ahead and just create an image link and then we'll go ahead and end the video. Actually, I misspoke. I wanted to do an internal link and then a link to the image. And then we will go ahead and end the video. So let me go ahead and an internal link is a link to another page within the same site. In order for this to work, I need to have another HTML page. Let's use my page from last week.
So I could click here and see last week's page. Uh, the image isn't appearing because I went ahead and deleted that, but that was our work then. And notice here in the hyperlink reference portion, I only included the name of the file. Okay, so the last one we were going to look at was an image, and then we were going to go ahead and end the video. In the files that the publisher gave us, we have this images folder, which I'm going to drag onto my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and look in the images folder as well, and see there's a number of images in here. I'm going to take the Australia logo image and go ahead and put that in. I can see the full file name, Australia logo JPEG. So I'm going to add this the same way that we were used to adding images already. I must have done something wrong. Oh, I forgot to place this in my images folder. And it looks like everything else with the file name is the same. I'm also going to go ahead and look at the properties and see the height and width, 800 by 307. I'll go ahead and put that in as well. It's a good practice. Now, I must have done something. Nope, there we go. So now I've just added the image itself. In order to make this a link, maybe I want to, it to go to Google. Let's just use that since we already know the, the address. I would simply put the ahref around that tag. So I'm going to go to... google.com and then after the image, excuse me, let me go ahead and just realize too that I'm coming to the end, oops, sorry about that, to the end of the page that you all can see. Uh, so let me space this out a little bit and show you that after the image is where I'm going to close my anchor. Uh, refresh. And now if I click on the Australia image, I'm taken to Google. So what we looked at in this video was just a basic understanding of how the internet works. And then we looked at links. We looked at external links links to other resources like a PDF file, a link, an email link, as well as an internal link where we just specified the path relative to our current location as opposed to an absolute path, which is when I include the entire URL. An internal link only used that relative path. And then I used an image to serve as a link to another page. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video now.